I've got another mini PC and this one labels itself a gaming PC. So we're going to play a lot of games on this and just see how it runs. It's featuring an APU, the Vega 8. The whole point here is that it's a very low cost system that will allow you to play a lot of different games and you can get it configured a few different ways. This is the ARM 5 from Ace Magician. Who keys is where I get my Windows keys, and there's a reason for that. They have OEM Windows keys, which are a fraction of the price of the regular Windows keys. They've got Windows 11 Pro, they got Windows 10 Pro, they got Home, they got Office 2021, and we also have 2019 and 2016 as well. All month long they've got their Black Friday sale going on, but we have a coupon code that'll make the price even lower. Use TS25 to save 25%. Putting in coupon code TS25, click apply, and then watch these prices come down. Wonderful. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here, go to your user center, click on my purchase orders, just view keys and codes, and you can just copy and paste your key, hit start, type activate, click on activation settings, paste it in there, click on next, and you will be activated. You know, I never liked how Microsoft has different prices for different people. If you're a home user, you're gonna pay 10 times more than an OEM builder or a corporation or something like that. And that's why I like heading to places like whokeys.com to get the OEM keys so I can pay a price that makes sense. So thanks to them for sponsoring and now to our regularly scheduled program. Name's kind of insane, Ace Magician. So let's talk about the specs and then I'm gonna play a whole bunch of games, including emulators, new games, modern games, and just see how they run on there, like some of the ridiculous modern games. But I'm also gonna play some older games and we'll just talk about how gaming is on this but you know it's for a lot more than just gaming while i was editing the video ace magician sent over a coupon code for their amazon page that brings the price down from 459 down to 337 dollars it's a hundred dollar coupon plus five percent off so you can enter this code in you can see the code in the description keep that in mind when i'm doing the benchmarks and everything and just talking about what the system can do this system is going to be priced 337 for you so first off this has the ryzen 7 5700u there is a version with the 5600u now the 5600U has better per core performance and it's Ryzen 3. This one's Ryzen 2, but I actually recommend this one. This one has Vega 8 graphics as opposed to Vega 7 graphics. So if gaming matters at all, this is a much better way to go. Now, the big key thing about this one, you may see on the front, there's this huge knob. What is that knob all about? Well, that knob, I'm just gonna have to show you. It changes the speed of the machine. You have low power, auto, and then like a performance mode. And when you turn the knob, it actually gives you more voltage to play with. So all the gaming I'm doing with it on performance mode. Let's bring up CPU-Z, and I'm also gonna bring up core temp. Now with core temp, you can see here we're running at 16, 14, we're running at different wattages depending what's going on, you know. So starting off, 9.7, I just turned it down to the low power mode. And we can go ahead and stress the CPU right there. And, you know, it's not going to get any higher. Let's go ahead and put it on auto and see what it does. So I'm cranking it up right now. Turn the knob to auto. And look, we instantly went up to 18. So we can go up to 18 to 20. Now I'm going to put it on performance mode. We're getting different performance by turning the knob. Now, why would you want to do this and what's the benefit of that? Well, you may want to do this for a few different reasons. Let's say you're just browsing the web or you're just watching videos. Videos don't require that much power. You can put it on the low power mode and it'll stay nice and quiet. The fans uh, will just barely not even be there. You won't even hear much of anything. But if you're playing a game or doing rendering or working in Adobe Premiere or doing some crunching or something, I don't know, anything that requires a lot of power, you turn it up, the fans will ramp up a little bit. I didn't hear them with my headphones on, but without my headphones, it was about seven to 10 decibels higher than when it was in just the auto mode. All right, let's go into the rest of the specs. Now you can get this as a bare bone and it's extremely easy to upgrade for one big reason. The side panel, you just grab it, give it a little pressure and it pops right off. And under there, you can see we have two M.2 slots and we have a couple RAM slots. I got this one configured with a 512 uh, gigabyte M.2. We also have two 8 gig sticks from Lexar. So it's got 16 gigabytes, 512, um, and you can upgrade it to whatever you want, or you can just get a bare bone and install your own. But one thing I like about having the two M.2 is you can, you know, have your operating system on one and then put another one in there whenever you're filling it up and put a ton of games on it or whatever. Now this will support up to three different monitors, 4K 60. In the front, we have an audio port, then we have two USB 3.0 ports, and then we have that USB-C that can also be used as a display port. Looking at the back, we have two more USB 3.0 ports, display port, HDMI, uh, LAN, and then your DC power on the bottom. The dimensions of the unit are 5.23 by 2.8 
3.3 by 6.15 inches and it's 581 grams. And then we also have Wi-Fi 6 for the latest standards and all that. Comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro, but I mean you can install whatever you like. Windows 11 Pro is something I've gotten used to and that is because um, now you can get open, open shell or open start and install that to have a real start menu. So as you can see, my Windows start looks a little bit different. And then I'm also using something called the Explorer Patcher um, so that my edges are squared off and it just makes everything feel a little bit a little bit more like a real desktop operating system. So let's go ahead and talk about some gaming on this machine. Now I tried a whole bunch of different games. First off, let's see how superposition works. And I'm gonna test superposition in two different ways. Let's do superposition first with it in the automatic mode and just see how we do in automatic mode. Is automatic mode good enough to give us the maximum performance? And it turns out it's not. It gives us pretty good performance, but if you want the full performance, you're gonna to need to crank that up and use the performance mode. So we did get a few extra FPS by doing that. Let's take a look at Cinebench. Now I've left it on the automatic mode just to see how fast that would do and it did stay quieter but we got 6817 still faster than the 7700k now let's step up and look at the high power mode when you crank it up it's quite a bit better because all the cores are getting more power we also did gink bench and you can see our single and multi-core score right there if you're keeping score at home and then i also decided to run OpenCL just to see how i did with that when they say gaming i, I feel like it's for a lot of your back catalog it's not going to play the brand new triple a games with all the all the highlights and effects and ray tracing and everything so it's not for alan wake 2 but you can play a lot of amazing games like hades um, if you're someone who's into dota or uh, Fortnite or whatever. I haven't, I haven't really played those games much. I tried to play Dota a little bit just to make sure that it ran really well. And Dota on the high settings, uh, I was getting anywhere between 62 on the on the first test, 62 FPS, and then I did another test in a different area and got 74. So that's playable in my opinion. If you wanted to turn down some of the effects, you could if you're super competitive and you'd rather look at a potato, then that's your your prerogative, so go ahead. Next up, I played one of my favorite indie games of all time, and that's Anno, and uh, you can check that out. The link's in the description. But I was able to get 38 FPS running around Noctis City, just beautiful lighting and everything everywhere. Now, next up, I wanted to try Doom Eternal, and I tried this in two different areas because Doom Eternal, you get vastly different performance depending on where you are. If you're somewhere with tons of geometry and tons of enemies, your FPS will be a little bit lower. But if you're somewhere with less geometry, then it's not too bad. So my first test, I was getting around, you know, 80 to 100 FPS. But I thought this area, you know, it's cool. There's a lot of expansive stuff going on. It looks really pretty. But let's go somewhere with more geometry. And then I did another test. Uh, and with everything set to medium, I was able to get 37 FPS at 1080p. Um, and it felt really good. Once I got inside, that was in an outdoor area. I tried to find the, the worst spot that I could possibly benchmark just to see how it would go. You know, you could set it on high in other places, but I think I would just keep this game on medium because it looks amazing even on medium. You can see here it's playing really smooth in my opinion. So once you get inside, you know, even if there's a bunch of stuff going on, it plays remarkably well. This game is extremely well optimized and runs on this APU just fine because Vulcan and the id, I don't know, the magicians. Next up, I tried Hades, because that, I think, will give us a good idea of how a lot of modern indie games are going to run on this, and it was just no problem. 106 FPS average, and Hades looks really good, too. So if you're playing that, or Hollow Knight, or a lot of the modern... If you're playing that, or Hollow Knight, or another one of the modern, uh, beautiful indie games, they're going to run just fine. Last, I did a couple different benchmarks of Metro Last Light. So let's take a look at those. So this is Metro Last Light on the regular mode. So I've got it set to medium, and I did turn on some tessellation, but I do have the physics turned off because we don't have an NVIDIA GPU, of course. On the average mode, we got 30. And I did run it on quality low because I was trying to get over 30 FPS. And as you can see here, um, I did not get over 30 FPS when the machine was just set to auto. But if you turn it up to performance, it does get over 30 FPS. Now this game is probably a bit much for this machine. Yeah, you could turn a couple of things down if you wanted to turn tessellation down. I think it would be playable. So if you have a lot of fancy 3D games, and this game looks really good still, even, even now in 2023 and in 2024, it still looks awesome. So if you wanted to play these games, Games, you totally could. I would just, you know, on like 1080p low settings and turn off tessellation, but I wanted to keep it on. You know, I thought maybe Street Fighter 6 would work because this engine is really optimized. It's a, they've done a very good job with it, but uh, it's, it's close. So here's the deal with Street Fighter 6. You can play it and it runs really, really well at 720p on low settings. 
I mean, it was like buttery smooth. But when I, here's the weird thing is when I turned it up to 1080p, MSI Afterburner is still reporting that I'm getting 60 FPS, but it feels floaty and slow. So when you jump, it moves a little bit slow. It's easier to do the move sometimes. You can take advantage of the slow motion. It feels fluid, but it just feels slightly like it's running in slow motion. I'm not sure what that is about the engine, but you know, like I said, Afterburner was still reporting that I'm getting a good frame rate. So my benchmarks for Street Fighter VI or 58 FPS when I'm running 720p low. And be sure to turn off your global illumination and bring your shadows down to low and it'll run really, really smooth, but it doesn't look as good as I'd like it to look. But it runs. So the last thing I did was try out a bunch of emulators in Retroarch and I had no problem with PSP games and, and such. Those ran really, really well, no problem. And I was even able to turn up some of the mega bezel ridiculous filters to make it look like a CRT. Even though the PSP shouldn't look like a CRT, I did it anyway just for the hell of it. After that, I also decided to test a little PlayStation 2 and that works totally fine on this as well. Um, I also installed Yuzu, and I got some of the games to launch, but uh, no, it's probably not, this is not a system for Yuzu, but it'll work. With older systems, you know, if you want to run Dolphin Emulator or whatever, it's totally fine on this. So while you can't play your Switch games on this, I mean, you might be able to. With a few future updates, you may be able to play your Switch games on this. I did get some of them to run a little bit, but they were having some issues with the shaders and stuff, but I, I think it's probably possible in the future. This I think this has enough power once the emulation gets a little better, once they add a few more effects. So we'll say Switch is a maybe on this system, maybe. There's also a Ryu Jinx, so you can try that as well. But I didn't do it because it was taking a lot of time. Uh, what it really comes down to for me is how easy this thing is to use. Um, that the, the gimmick of turning it up, I actually like it. It's really cool to be able to like turn my power up and down. It feels like the old turbo switches that you had back in the day, you know, with your 486s and whatnot. You could just turn on the turbo switch, get yourself a few extra, few extra megahertz. Sometimes you needed to turn that off if you were playing an older game because, you know, the frame rate and the frequency of the CPU were so closely linked that you'd be running around way too fast and it would be like, ah, it's too much. It's kind of cool to be able to have that and control how much power you're getting in your system. If you want to keep it cool and quiet you can do that so if you're someone who really wants to play a bunch of indie games um, and like super fancy games from just a few years ago this will play them and at the price i think it's a pretty good deal to get an apu that's this powerful and a system that's this easy to configure and work with i really love that you can just pull off that side panel and have instant access to your ram and your your m.2 slots so they really thought about all that a lot and also i want to note that you can get this in multiple different colors there's gray and silver and black this one is the silver version. Uh, one other thing to note is the cooling. It's the intake is on the bottom. So make sure you don't put this on carpet or whatever. Or if you do put a piece of cardboard or something under it so that nothing gets in the way and you have air, you know, nice cool air coming in. Um, and then it, it hits the blower fan and it blows out the back, keeps everything nice and cool. So what do you think of this Ace Magic Arm 5? Interesting. Is it something that you would try out? Let me know in the comments. That's it for today. And don't forget we're having a sale right now around Epic Pants. All the Phoenix stuff is half off. Mostly to torture me because when I get back from Japan, I'm going to have to mail all this stuff. But have fun buying stuff. I'll see you later.